Dear guests, Calvin, I am very glad to take part of uh, China UAE Innovation Investment Conference 2020. Development Research Center of the State Council is a policy research organization affiliated to the State Council. We are a think tank. Our responsibility is to do research on long-term strategic macro social economic issues in China and also provide advice for a mid to long-term development plans as well as short-term economic policy adjustments. As you all know, China had just had the fifth plenary session of the 19th CPC Congress, where the Central Committee of the CPC mapped out some new development visions. China is entering into a new phase of high-quality development. In the future, we want to be a strong, modern country. This is a judgment made partly because of the changes of the overall environment we are in right now. The first change is the external environment that we are in today. We are in unprecedented situation right now. Many experts mentioned before that we are faced with quite severe external challenges, especially global trade friction and anti-globalization and so on. We also believe that there are still many opportunities for China in this process. For example, global economic and trade growth is pivoting to developing countries from developed countries, especially BRIC countries, with China as one example. Developing countries will be more and more important in future global economic development and trade. According to UNCTAD, over 60% of global marine transportation for trade are in developing countries. So there is huge changes in terms of uh, the gravity of economic development and trade. Secondly, global infrastructure interconnection is on the rise. China's Belt and Road Initiative has got lots of response from international organizations and countries. EU proposed infrastructure interconnection plan for Eurasia continent and Indonesia, Kazakhstan, and some other countries also proposed their infrastructure investment plan. Infrastructure interconnection is all about having more countries integrated into globalization. This promotes transfer of global industrial chain and deepens interconnection among countries. So, changes in infrastructure are important for future globalization. Thirdly, new round of technological revolution. This round of digital economic revolution with internet, big data, cloud computing as examples are bringing a lot of new products and industries and business models. The whole world is at the same starting point. Everybody is working on this right now. And this means huge boost to future global economy. We think that currently, urbanization is very powerful in the process of global economic development. And in recent several years, urbanization is happening more in densely populated countries, like China and Southeast Asian countries. Lots of people rush to cities, go to work in industries and the service sector. 
And this not only brings changes to economic development, but more importantly, also reshapes global consumption market and leads to redistribution of global industrial chain. In terms of reshaping consumption market, many new cities will emerge as consumption centers, just like Beijing and Shanghai in China, which currently are among top 10 of 140 global international consumption centers. In the future, these 140 cities will contribute to about 30% to the world economy, but they only has, have 13% of the world's population. So the development of global urbanization will promote global economic development and integration of global consumption markets. These are still many positive factors that can be utilized in the process of global development. Now we are suffering from the unprecedented pandemic. Under pandemic, China actually spent about half a year to control the pandemic quite successfully and at the same time realized quite good economic recovery. But many more countries, including US, Europe, and Brazil and India are still suffering from the pandemic. COVID-19 has had huge impact on the economy of every country. Both supply and demand have been affected. It disrupted the industrial chain of some countries, maybe the whole world, but also it led to unstable employment and economic downturn. So global economic cycle is spiraling down. In this process, we see that China's successful control of the pandemic and economic recovery are good benchmarks for the whole world and it helped boost confidence about world economic growth. More importantly, pandemic may become a new variable in today's world. Who can win early opportunities of economic development under the pandemic will probably play a bigger role in future world economic growth and governance. So we feel that the pandemic is a key new variable. More importantly, in the fifth plenum, the new development targets in the next century was mentioned. This is towards the 14th five-year period and beyond that. Now China is at the intersection of two centuries. The goal of the first century was to build China into a moderately prosperous society. This target will be achieved by the end of this year. We are positive about this. Next year, we'll start a new round of journey for China. Using the language of the whole world, China wants to evolve from a medium-income country to a high-income country and then into mid-tier high-income countries by the year 2035. So more focus will be put on quality growth instead of uh, the speed of development in China. We estimate that China will definitely become a high-income country in the year 2025. And then by 2035, China will do even better in terms of its development. This is the new target and vision proposed in the fifth plenum. For the new vision to be achieved, China needs high-quality development and innovation and efficiency-driven development. 
The biggest driver and tool will be digital economy. For example, internet, big data, cloud computing, and other emerging technologies, as well as the integration of those technologies, will drive this round of digital economic development. Innovation will not only enable us to have a lot of digital products, like our cell phones, mobile terminals, digital displays, and so on, but also deployment of digital applications in wider scope will lead to changes of social and economic development pattern in the future. First of all, there will be many more new business models, such as online shopping, mobile payment, and city governance with digital means. So the development of digital economy has become key for industrial competition and market competition among countries. China still lags behind developed countries in terms of uh, digital economic development. Right now, we are world number two economy. The scale of our digital economy is smaller compared with that of U.S. The proportion of digital economy in GDP in China is lower as well. But even so, it has been growing very fast. Last year, in 2019, the proportion of digital economy in GDP was already 36 percent, higher by over 10 percentage points compared with 2010. So digital economy is developing very fast in China. More importantly, also according to MIIT, the areas of digital economy in China are developing particularly fast, especially the following four areas. One is the industry of digitization, including R&D of different technologies, production of digital products, which is what we call electronic information industry. Since pandemic, smart devices like smart vacuum cleaners, smart robots, and drug dispensing machines, temperature reading robots are developing very fast. And also hardware like cloud servers are developing fast too as well. Traditional industries like service, manufacturing, and agriculture are going through digital transformation. Our tertiary industry is relatively leading in this regard. And service industry includes finance, information service, circulation industry, etc. And they account for over 40% of the overall digital economy. There are also digital governance, digital infrastructure, and so on. Digital economy is also having huge impact on employment. There have been many new jobs created with the development of digital economy, like you see delivery guys around you every day. The jobs created by online, offline connection account for higher and higher proportion in the service sector. You can see that the development rate of digital economy is around 40%, which is faster than that of manufacturing industry and agriculture, which is uh, less than 10%.
From the survey in Zhejiang last week, we can see that digital transformation in agriculture is picking up speed as well, especially some agricultural production organizations, such as cooperatives. Leading agricultural enterprises are playing big role in the process of digital development. Since COVID-19, digital economy is picking up speed. And this is having huge impact on overall economic operation. Communities were locked down, people cannot travel, plus social distancing rules, those activities which could be organized offline, like conferences, tourism, consumption of services, dining services, etc., have been disrupted. And this is reversely driving the rapid development of digital economy. Several phenomena stood out during the pandemic. First, consumption is moving towards online. Besides online shopping, which had already been popular, there are also many new online consumptions, especially of services, for example, entertainment, fitness, education, medical care, especially education. Online education was just a niche market in the past. But under pandemic, school education, including primary school, middle schools and universities have moved to online. This is an important trend. Online consumption can cover more people. For example, the user base of Alipay and WeChat has been growing, including senior people. In the past, these group of people were not major online consumption clients, but now more and more gray-haired people are joining the trend. So, online consumption is a big trend under pandemic. Second, overall, economic operation is becoming smarter and more intelligent. This is especially true for smart services. We talked about smart manufacturing in the past in China, but during the pandemic, we saw smart services, contactless, robot-dependent smart services are becoming a new trend. And we use lots of this kind of services in China. And by doing this, it has helped push the development of smart equipment manufacturing. Third trend, remote working. For many enterprises, after the pandemic, whether they can resume work or production, very soon is partly decided by whether they have access to internet connection and remote working. In the past, companies needed to negotiate face-to-face -face for orders or through traveling. But now orders can be placed quickly through cloud-based negotiation. I was in contact with a logistics company through online negotiation, orders have resumed to 60% prior to the pandemic, and recovering capacities are integrated through internet platform for faster growth. So virtual working, video conferencing, smart assistance, etc have enabled many companies to recover very quickly. And also in the process of digital development, especially during pandemic, 
we see lots of supply chain innovation or reshaping. For example, e-commerce. Previously, we depended on Taobao, JD.com, which are big platforms. But after the pandemic, community shops are developing faster. They use internet to sell products and then deliver products to households. So it is very convenient and created a new e-commerce supply chain. Such supply chain enable more people to enjoy the efficiency of digital economy. And smart cities are developing fast as well. I think everybody has deep feelings about this. The tools that we use today in managing our neighborhood, health, distributing pandemic information, and tracking are all realized faster with smart city and internet platforms. About two months ago, we did a survey about the improvement of business environment in China. One change that stood out was that local governments in China have many big moves in terms of uh, smart cities, especially in terms of internet-enabled governments. In the past, the slogan in Zhejiang was, we'll be on it immediately. But now the slogan in many cities in government service halls is like this, doing it online, doing it through your mobile phone, etc. Internet platforms help governments to better manage their cities and realize smart development of the cities. During the pandemic, there have been a lot of new business models created on the Internet. For example, live streaming e-commerce. This existed in the past, but was promoted faster during the pandemic. There are other innovations in business models as well, like virtual traveling. We cannot go out, but we can enjoy beautiful scenery around China through Internet. This also creates condition for resumption of tourism after the pandemic. So we have been promoting the upgrading of devices, business models, and consumption content through synergy and with more traffic. This is manifestation of rapid development of uh, digitization in pandemic. During the pandemic, innovative application of digital technologies have been faster. One is the application of big data. Governments feel the value of big data in economic development, especially the important role of precise analysis of big data in helping us understand the flow of people and resumption of work, how many people have returned to work, etc. We use the information of location changes in our cell phone to understand hours spent at home and hours spent at work so that we can estimate how many people already have resumed work. This data is faster and more precise compared with data collected by the Statistics Bureau. How do we support jobs has become a very important policy for the Chinese government. Also, many 5G technologies have been used. Before the pandemic, 5G was experimental technology, just starting the commercialization. But pandemic promoted the deployment of 5G. And with 5G, there are other technologies like autonomous vehicles, cleaning robots, etc., that can be used. So 5G application scenarios are quickly enriched. AI 
played a big role in the fight against the pandemic as well. Hospitals, including those in Wuhan, used a lot of smart robots to help care the patients, sterilize and clean, and drones, unmanned vehicles, and smart delivery equipments have been used in neighborhoods. And we have been discussing on this in these several days. Blockchain. Blockchain has been used a lot during the pandemic as well. Trust is very important. Blockchain played a key role in stabilizing supply chain, industrial chain, and also facilitating trade. Innovation shown during the pandemic is very much in line with the trend of global digital economic development. It showed the key role of digital economy in supporting consumption, employment, and innovation, as well as stabilizing growth. So it is a true new force for future high-quality development of China's economy. In the future, we believe the potential of digital economy is huge, especially in China. The key is Chinese big market. This is also the new competitive advantage in China after 40 years of reform and open up with big market, large population, diversified multi-tiered demand, there will be rich application scenarios for digital technologies in the future. Many innovations can be experimented in China and then there will be economy of scale and scope and spillover effects. This is China's advantage compared with others. Even though China lags behind other countries such as US and EU in terms of original technologies, we have the unique advantage of scale when it comes to the application of emergent technologies. So the potential of digital development in China in the future is very big. And in the future, we think that there are several points about the development of digital economy that we should pay attention to. For example, we think future digital economy will be more comprehensive. In the first 10 years, digital economy was more about the circulation of commodities and production of goods. But in the future, it will shift to service and manufacturing. Digital economy started with consumption side from the past. And in the future, it will evolve to the market side, manufacturing side, and design side. And this is happening very fast. Digital economy will probably link all nodes of economy from production to consumption very efficiently so as to create more stable and efficient industrial chain and value chain. And we also see that digital economy needs more innovation factors to support. The key to digital economic development is not just having technologies, but also capital and high-caliber talents, as well as new innovation factors generated by big data. So digital economy is capital-intensive, technology-intensive, and talent-intensive industry. We need more input of innovation factors for digital economic development. And digital economic development will create many new industrial organizations and promote integrated development of enterprises of different sizes, 
especially um, in terms of platforms. As you may know that in recent years, unicorn companies are growing very fast. Many of them are actually platform companies. In China, platform economy is developing very fast. Taobao, JD.com, Tmall, Didi, etc. are very valuable platforms. And more importantly, through platforms, we can provide more application scenarios and tools of digitization for companies. For example, many companies don't have digitization tools. They need to reach the bigger market through platforms and use the computing power of platforms to support their digitization and optimization of their industrial chain and procurement. Take Meituan as one example. By connecting with Meituan, many small and medium-sized catering companies expanded their sales area, and more importantly, it helps them to automatically manage their bookkeeping system optimize sourcing supply chain and innovate menus. So platforms are crucial for digital economy. Lastly, digital economic development may help drive a new round of coordinated development between urban and rural areas, eastern, central and western part of China as well. It may help achieve balanced development of internal and external trade. Looking from today's situation, the next step of China's digital economic development will not just be the development of certain digital industries. Top priorities should be pushing all industries, including service, manufacturing and agriculture, to realize digital transformation. Also, the deployment of technologies will create more new application scenarios and business models. It is also very important to promote government transition and speed up smart digital governance. According to MIT's estimation, China's digital economy will exceed 60 trillion by 2025, accounting for more than 40 percent of GDP, and probably 45 percent. The Chinese government takes the development of digital economy very seriously. In the past four to five years, China published many policies and opinions regarding the development of digital economy. Including in the 14th five-year plan, digital economy is mentioned as an independent chapter. It's been considered a very important task in terms of promoting future development. We think in the future we need to speed up the interpretation of digital economy, letting more people and entrepreneurs to understand the importance of digital economy. Meanwhile, governments should invest more in new infrastructure so as to support digital economy. During the pandemic period, we have kicked off the so-called new infrastructure, including 5G, underlying infrastructure, cloud storage, and so on. These are key infrastructures for digital economy. And common facilities like platform economy, which serve industries, should also be developed faster. These are external common facilities for SMEs. We should also support these kind of um, facilities or platforms. In addition to infrastructure investment, enterprises should also invest in digital facilities, equipments, and R&D. Governments should come up with more favorable policies in terms of investment to support digitization and governments need to create a good business environment for digital economy. And especially, they should change governance model and improve governance capability, enhance supervision with digital means, so that we can evolve to reasonable regulation 
and prudence so as to facilitate digital economic development in China and also making digital economy a new force for innovative development. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my great honor to participate in this conference and share with you some of our thoughts and practices, deepen our mutual understanding, and discuss the cooperation between Sinopec and its partners from United Arab Emirates and MENA in the field of financial investment. As you know, after the 2008 financial crisis, the global economic recovery has long been sluggish. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has further divided the global economic system. The global industrial and supply chain has suffered a profound impact. National economies are facing the risk of severe recession and the lack of impetus for economic growth, which has brought new difficulties to the theme of our times, peace and development. Meanwhile, a new round of technological revolution and industrial transformation is giving birth to a large number of new industries, creating new areas of economic growth and becoming an important engine driving growth, creating jobs, and improving people's livelihood. Information technology has penetrated in all fields of economic and social life and promoting the mode of economic development to expand from material production services to information production services. International energy companies are also accelerating their digital innovation and diversifying their business. The rapid cost reduction and the development of new energy have promoted the energy transformation to become a global consensus. Some energy companies have come up with near zero emissions target. The Paris Agreement sets out global emission reduction targets, which have been implemented from the national to corporate level, reshaping the green development of energy and economy. The development of biotechnology and new materials have produced significant innovations which have comprehensively enhanced the quality of human life and the space for development. The integration of information technology, new energy, new materials and biotechnology has promoted a new round of technological revolution and industrial transformation, which has disrupted many industries, opened up new racetracks and provided good opportunities for global enterprises and countries to change lanes and overtake cars. In particular, in some emerging fields where technological rules and competition rules are still absent, the restructuring of global industrial and supply chains is accelerating, providing new opportunities for traditional economies such as China and the UAE to transform and leapfrog development. Since the beginning of its reform and opening up, China has achieved a rapid economic growth and long-term social stability rarely seen in the world. It is about to build a moderately prosperous society in all respects, realize the first centenary goal of the Chinese nation, and enter a new stage of development. In the new stage of development, China is led by innovation and open cooperation, focusing on deepened supply-side restructuring, driven by reform and innovation, aiming to meet people's increasing desire for a better life, speeding up the development of the new development pattern, featuring domestic circulation as a mainstay, and letting domestic and international circulations reinforce each other. With a population of 1.4 billion and per capita GDP exceeding 10,000 RMB yuan, China is the world's largest and most promising consumer market. Household consumption still needs to be improved and upgraded. 
combined with modern technology and production method, this will create huge market space and provide a more efficient, inclusive and a sustainable growth driver for the world economy. China has put forward a new pattern of development and will continue to open wider and deeper to the outside world, which has created a favorable environment for enterprises to achieve high quality development. In the new stage of development, innovation and cooperation have become the key words in China's 14th five-year plan for economic and social development and is a vision 2035. As a vertically integrated international energy and chemical company, Sinopec has the world's largest refining capacity, the third largest chemical production and second largest number of gas stations, ranking the second in the recent Fortune 500 list. It provides Chinese consumers with more than 55 percent of product oil and more than 25 percent of chemical products each year. Now it is embarking on a new stage of development too. Sinopec deepens supply-side restructuring and seeks strength from innovation and targets to be world-leading clean energy and a chemical company. We have put forward together a new paradigm with energy resources as our basis, clean energy and high-end materials as our two wings, and a new energy materials and economy as our three new drivers. Along our path towards a tech-driven company, we are striving to achieve transformation in quality, efficiency, and driving force, and realize high-quality development. Sinopec Capital was founded in 2018 with a two missions. First, to find strategic investment opportunities for financial investments, so as to build a new engine for the transformation and upgrading of Sinopec Group. Second, to explore a completely market-driven path for reforms so as to accumulate reform experiences which can be replicated and disseminated. Over the past two years, Sinopec Capital has formed an investment team featuring specialization, marketization, internationalization and standardization, placed its focus on new energy, new materials, energy conservation, environmental protection, high-end manufacturing, big data, artificial intelligence and other strategic emerging industries invested in Shanghai Refar, Zhejiang, Subcon, Richful New Material and other tech-driven companies, integrated state-owned capital and private capital, given full play to the advantages of industrial chain synergy and empowered SMEs. We are glad to see that our portfolio companies growing rapidly with our help to improve their corporate governance and connect them with resources and the market. In October this year, Sinopec Capital launched its first fund specializing in technological innovation to support the commercialization of Sinopec R&D outcomes and deploy cutting-edge technologies in strategic emerging industries in a more flexible and market-oriented way. In addition, Sinopec Capital is forming new industrial investment funds and a fund of funds together with onshore and offshore industrial financial investors, aiming to invest either directly or through other funds to build a new engine for the group's upgrading and promote our development and transformation. President Xi said that to realize dreams, meet challenges, and create the future, the driving force can only come from development, reform, and innovation. Our two countries have established a comprehensive strategic partnership. 
The UAE is an important country along the Belt and Road. Abu Dhabi is a financial and innovation center in MENA. It has established a sovereign wealth fund system with years of experience in overseas investment. Sinopec has established a good cooperative relations with the UAE counterparts in the fields of crude oil trade, warehousing and storage projects, engineering services, etc. ADNOC is our important partner. Sinopec Capital believes that success is started by technology and enabled by capital. We look forward to working with UAE partners and share the business opportunities arising from China's technological innovations, supply-side reform and mixed ownership reform, create more value for investors and portfolio companies, help the transformation and the development of MENA region and allow all peoples to benefit from the world's economic growth and achieve common prosperity and progress. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Zahar bin Zahar, the CEO of the Registration Authority in ADGM. Abu Dhabi Global Market is an award-winning international financial center mandated to position the Emirate of Abu Dhabi as a foremost investment hub, bridging the gap between East and West and facilitating the UAE vision to establish a knowledge-based economy to support its economic diversification strategy. Comprised of three independent authorities, the ADGM Courts, Registration Authority, and Financial Services Regulatory Authority. ADGM has continuously provided its entities with a holistic, vibrant ecosystem, complemented by a progressive regulatory framework and notable offerings. Parts and parcel of these offerings is our tech startup license, which ensures startups across the globe are able to establish a presence within ADGM in a cost-effective and timely fashion. ADGM has driven to develop a robust startup ecosystem through various partnerships with leading local, regional, and international entities, such as Hub 71, the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, as we look to create synergistic and dynamic relationships that fortify our collective efforts and support the achievements of our shared goals. These partnerships have resulted in the development of numerous landmark initiatives across various pockets of the UAE startup landscape, such as FinTech, EdTech, and Agritech, as well as pioneering programs, such as the Department of Health, Startup Accelerator, and ongoing engagements with UAE University. ADGM provides a unique and end-to-end -end innovative environment that supports each player in anchoring their presence and accelerating their business in Abu Dhabi and across the MENA region. As a key ecosystem enabler, we play an integral role in nurturing the entrepreneurial spirit in Abu Dhabi by providing a progressive regulatory infrastructure and support services required to enable the growth of the tech ecosystem. ADGM will continue to support the UAE government ongoing efforts to develop the nation stature as a hub of innovation, opportunity, and investment for startups across the region and globe. We are pleased to welcome companies and entrepreneurs looking for opportunities to launch and scale their businesses in Abu Dhabi and the wider Middle East region. ADGM will continue to support the UAE government's ongoing efforts to develop the nation's stature as a hub of innovation, opportunity, and investment for startups across the region and globe. We are pleased to welcome companies and entrepreneurs looking for opportunities to launch and scale their business in Abu Dhabi and the wider Middle East region. Thank you.
One of the significant hallmarks of a leading international financial centre is its judiciary and its dispute resolution framework. And that is what you have here in ADGM, with ADGM courts and ADGM as a seat of arbitration. But what is different about us, what connects us with the world, is our transformative way of delivering judicial services, our transformative way of connecting you across the world with our services. We do this by a bespoke courtroom in which I'm standing now and an extraordinary electronic platform that enables you to connect with us no matter where you are, no matter what time. This is a common law jurisdiction with the most extraordinary, capable and experienced judges who are able to transact the business of law. We're in an international financial centre. We know what it means to investors to have reliability, transparency and efficiency. We cannot be out of step with business. We cannot be out of step with investors. And that is the service we provide. And we look forward to so many more years of our extraordinary services and innovation and legal transformation.